ladies and gentlemen, a warning. <laughs> the show you are about to see is not for the faint of heart. It is a tale of intrigue, deception, and murder, most foul. And uh, if you're with a weaker heart, we beg you for your own safety and the safety of others. Seek shelter immediately from this place. If you need help, there will be a gentleman at either door to escort you to safety. And, uh, <laughs> not the, <laughs> the events you are about to see are not scripted, except obviously for this part. <laughs> That's the end of that. But don't ask us what's going to happen, because even we don't know. So, now, oh, now it's up. Great. <laughs>
Well, what about you, Doctor? It's us. Why don't you go first? Well, uh... No, only one of us we know here was in fact a killer at one time, and that was you. So what You listen to me, young man! I gave that up a long time ago! And if you bring that up again, so help me God, you will be my next victim! I'm sorry, I, I don't want to come over here. Okay. I'll go first, that's fine. Spirit? Holy Spirit, here we go. Okay, well, good night, everybody. Uh, I'm going to bed also. Hours pass. Deep into the night, we go to Georgie Chicarelli's room where she is asleep on her bed. She gets a late night visitor in the form of Harry Worthington's son, the Why are 
be so scared? Why would anyone want to kill a nice girl like you? Unless you are the killer! Oh, me? Why, why would I want to kill anybody here? I don't know anybody. I'm as innocent as a little bumblebee. I don't steal. Really, Mrs. Swanson, is that necessary? I've done nothing to you. You take the fluids out of the people's bodies and you put chemicals inside and then you shove them into a box and put them under the ground. What else are you capable of? Love, Mrs. Swanson. Oh, Mrs. Swanson. Okay, I won't do that. to go to a young woman's room, but he can't get the courage. He is joined there by Bob McDitters, who also cannot seem to get to sleep. Funny, murder has a way of doing that to people. I just said, you can't sleep either, can you? I can't sleep. I, I had to get out of that place, that cramped little room. It's tough to sleep when people are dying. Yeah, I know. That's why I couldn't sleep. It's scared out of my mind. What are you really doing here, McDinners? Oh, I'm over here murdering you. Did you come? <laughs> what does it look like? You think I can take you on? I mean, look at you. You're this strong and young, wiry, you're probably really tough. <laughs> I am. I just wish I could tell some. Who? Someone. Doris. Oh boy, is this woman advice? I don't know about this. <laughs> McDinners, have you ever been in love? Sure, with my wife, when she was alive. She's dead? <laughs> yeah, she's dead. Uh, it's that hard. must be horrible. How'd she die? Oh, it was a, an accident. I, I wasn't there at the time. It was just some freak combine and I stopped. <laughs> You're so emotionally stifled. I wish I could be like you. I just... I think I'm in love. With Doris? Yes! Yes! Well, uh, I, from what I remember, before she was dead, I, you should go and talk to her and tell her. You think so? Sure, or write her a little note. Or do some kind of romantic gesture. You know, uh, set a nice fire, or, uh... A fire? Maybe fix her something to eat. <laughs> She'd like that. Sure, I've sure. I've never been good with the ladies, but, but maybe you're right. It's, it's what I need to do. Well, you need to come out with it. I mean, I, I'd be scared someone was going to kill me and too preoccupied with that to fall in love. <laughs> but if you're at that point, I can understand that. I mean, love is a strange mistress. You try to hug it, and you squeeze too tight, and it dies. 
I would never want that to happen to Doris. <laughs> Back in Georgie Ciccarelli's room, her scream has come to the interest of a few of the men. Chance Goodlove and Major Llewellyn Wathersford Smith tumble into the room to see what the scream was about, just as Harry Worthington saw the third was about to reveal the entrance of the dark. I promise. Oh, you said that last time. <laughs> well, anyway, I can't believe what else is in here. I wish I could read. Oh, oh no, the door's locked. Oh, what's going on? Uh, I... Sorry, uh, it, it was open. I just didn't turn the turn thing thing. Oh, <laughs> didn't turn the knob. What's going on? I heard a scream. Oh, you were right, Miss Chickarelli. Yeah? yeah? Uh, uh, yes, and then I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. Duncan, we found this! Okay. It's Thanks a, for that's knocking. A figurine. By, thanks for knocking, by the way. <laughs> oh, we heard a scream. What yes, was... we heard a scream. We found a doll with Hammett Lieber's initials and bear claw markings on it. Somebody obviously left this as a joke. Oh. Ha ha. And I say, uh, nobody noticed this. The suit of armor? Of, oh. uh, the, <laughs> the nose. Oh. Oh, yeah. Nobody will be able to notice this stuff. Permit for burial, removal, or cremation. Uh, Doris Mayflower, 25. But, oh, she's 40. But this can't be right. Doris Mayflower was still alive. Or is she? Huh. Is she? <laughs> That's her, right? <laughs> or is it? I see what you're saying. That's not really her. Let me see that diary. It says accidental poisoning. The Hyvenhurst Crematorium, Standard Method, Stephen Hammond. I knew Stephen Hammond. What's the date of that? What's the date? March 22nd, 1947. Dear diary, March 27th, 1947. I've just stolen the identity of a woman I killed. <laughs> oh, it goes on. It's on. I've stolen many identities of other people. And she typed them all out. That's very neat. She's very thorough. She is. Thoroughly murderous, I say. I think it's time to have our little Miss Mayflower. You're right, General. Who's with me? Uh, me, of course. I can <laughs> All right, we'll leave you here alone with the diary, Worthington, and we'll go confront her. Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't no. want to be here alone. Now that you'll be Something fine. Something happen to me. Just This is re being ridiculous if I agreed to stay here. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Mrs. Sorensen has finally left, and Rip Zawicki has got his courage up to tell her exactly how he feels. Doris. I'm a little frightened, but you seem frazzled, Mr. Zawicki. 
I have to tell you something that's really important. Oh, okay. Listen. With so many people dying, emotions running wild, my heart has got the best of me. And I'm afraid you've taken it. In a good way, sir. Doris, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it is a good thing. It is a good thing. It's just, ever since the first time we met, I fell into your eyes. And I trust you. I trust you more than anyone in this mansion. You would never hurt a fly. Yes. Can't you see? We'd like a little privacy. Don't worry. You'll get it as soon as we take her and lock her up. This isn't her no. bedroom. This is Dolores Mayflower's bedroom. Not Dolores, Doris. Dolores is the woman that was killed. <laughs> I'm so confused! Doctor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this! You'll have to come closer if you want to read it. <laughs> I'm talking about an imposter. That's right there. Oh, me. Dolores, no, god damn it, Doris! <laughs> Doris Mayflower died March 22nd, 1947. What? There's a death certificate to prove it. Dead? Well, of course there is, silly. <laughs> Doris Mayflower's my mother. I have her name. Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry. I've lost my temper, and I ask you to please forgive me for losing that. But uh, she is leaving these things all over the house. <laughs> There's my no father oh, having a late night drink, are we? No, I, I don't. I don't drink. That's uh, well, that's that's a libation left by uh, by by the housekeeper, Mrs. Sorensen. Well, if you're not going to drink it, I am. Do you, no, I I would advise against that. People are dying, sir. That could be poisoned. It might smell like good alcohol, but it could be, uh, you know, like a uh, brighter liquid or something. No, 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 no! Oh! No! No, no, oh my god! It's delicious! <laughs> Yes. I have to 
confess something to you. Oh, well, yes, my son, please do. I, I'm, I'm a professional at this. You know, the, the Catholic Church pays me to do this. I've never done this before. I'm a Jew. Oh, oh, okay. Um, give it your best shot. Um, shalom. Shalom. I'm trying to speak your language to help I you. speak English, you moron. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. All right, fine. Shut up and listen. Yes, okay. I couldn't help. But I snuck around and I grabbed Miss Mayflower's diary. I knew oh, it was wrong. That Yes, it is. Uh, Jesus would not approve. Well, but you don't care about that, so I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't get him involved in this story. I have enough people to worry about. Yes, I agree. Please, continue with your confession, young man. Her diary said that she's stolen the identity of people she's killed. It's obvious. She's here to steal our identities. Oh my God. She would never fit into my clothes. Well, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that she would steal your clothes because she doesn't also have a mustache. I, I think what she would probably do is, uh, well, she'd probably just steal your name. Maybe give it to another male that she's with, because she could never pass as a male. She's, she's a very shapely woman. Listen, Father. Yes. You look like a man I could trust. I am one. I'm a, I'm a father. A father figure. I'm a priest. Uh, so please, confide in me all you want, because well, I, I, can, I can take it. The thing is, God would never kill a priest. I mean, all priests are good, right? How about yes. priests? <laughs> all priests are good. And... <laughs> Meanwhile, Bob McGillis has made his way to his room, only to find Mrs. Sorensen having a rather long conversation with the Trollers. Like, but uh, you know, this has been a pretty scary experience, and uh, I'll take whatever measures we have to take. So stop drinking that already. <laughs> Those trolls are gonna be uh, angry or something. They're gonna be real thirsty. You look like you're pretty troubled, Mrs. Sorensen. Uh, more troubled than by us being killed off one by one in this strange house we can't escape. <laughs> Mr. McDeeters. The trolls, they kill because there is too much joy and pleasure happening in the house. And the loss of my son, the pain is so much that I just wanted to go away. And the only thing I can think of is carnal thoughts about someone in the house. <laughs> Well, uh, I can, uh, I can sure sympathize with your loss, uh, my, my wife, uh, she, uh, when she was around, I, well, she was, she was beautiful, I, uh, it's sore, it's really, it's not, it's not appropriate to help mingling with the guests, uh, it's not, who are we kidding? I feel it too! Really? Sure! <laughs> sure I'm terrified on many levels, of you particularly. <laughs> Mr. McDeeters, if we go through with this, the trolls are going to be very angry. <laughs> well, maybe we just have to 
cast their superstitions aside, or just put out my alcohol, that'll work. All right, I'm ready. In the closet now. now you got it. Doris Mayflower's room, General Llewellyn Wattisford Smith, Dr. Chance Goodlove, and Rip Zawicki are still grilling Doris Mayflower. There are inconsistencies in her story, and they, of course, are still waiting, waiting for the diary to come back. Pretend like I killed my mother killed herself accidentally. <laughs> That'll work. And I'll tell them how my father died. And then I'll be all vulnerable and pretty. That's exactly <laughs> what she did. She was all vulnerable and pretty right at the end, just like that. That's not true. Yeah, but it's certainly it is. You are very vulnerable and pretty. I'll continue denying it until I can't take it any longer. <laughs> it goes on. Would you like me to read I'd more? love to. Then I'll shout out uncontrollably with a confession. It stops there. <laughs> of course it does, because that's when you stopped writing it. What? <laughs> that's right. I may have said some of those words in my diary, but he had a couple of words to say himself. He twisted the story. I was just reading what was here on the page. Were you? Were you just reading it, Mr. Williamson? That's right. How do I know? How do we know? You didn't put him there. It's right here. Read it. See, if someone uh, comes close to guessing at me, then I'll just play dumb and uh, tell them that my mother accidentally killed. It goes on. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't... It, it doesn't matter! Oh. It, it does matter! matter. It does matter because one of these two is a killer! Now wait just a minute, everybody! I am sick and tired of everyone accusing everybody else! This is getting out of hand! What are you gonna do? Kill us? <laughs> Mother killer? What are you trying to say? I'm saying he was a hired hitman for the mob! What? That's right! Listen, what he's saying is true. I'll just come out and say it. My name was Father, well, not Father at the time, it was Antonio Figura. He was born and raised in Italy. And no, hang on, we, we, they're leaving! <laughs> Damn it! The door's locked! We're trapped in here. For real this time. We can always use one of those four doors. <laughs> Meanwhile, Georgie Ciccarelli is desperately trying to find Harry Worthington's son, the third. The house seems to loom over her. She is alone. A dangerous, dangerous position. scream echoes throughout the house <laughs> as she was hit with the candle side of the candlestick. <laughs> Not only hitting her in the head, but lighting her hair on fire. 
horribly disfiguring her face. Her screams of burning flesh and hair bring everyone in the house running, running to her aid, but alas, too late. upstairs in the attic next to the others. The rest of them gather together. Now they must come up with a real plan. They must find a way to remain safe for the rest of the night. Here. One of those two called us here is a trick. Don't you get it, you idiot? 
Thank you. 